Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to sync your local or session storage data across multiple tabs. So this just means that if, for example, your user has two open or two or more open tabs of your website or application and there is a change to local or session storage in one of the tabs, then the other tabs are going to be notified of that change and you can then update the UI or you know perform some sort of action to react to that change. Typically, you would probably just update the UI so both of them are in sync. And that is exactly what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. So we have a welcome back message right here for the currently logged in user. And as you may already uh may have predicted how we're going to be making it so if I change the username on this page then it's going to update the title also on this page. So going inside VS Code it currently looks like this. I've got this index HTML. I've also got a linked up JavaScript file which I'm going to get to very shortly but in the body I've only got a single h1 heading with an ID of welcome message. Now by default this displays loading dot 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 but the JavaScript is going to be responsible for updating that value because of course it's going to come from local storage so it needs to be dynamic. Going inside the main.js file it looks like this. So as we can see here what's happening is we have a function called update heading and this gets a reference to the h1 tag then it simply updates the text content using template strings to say welcome back comma then the username okay so very straightforward takes in a single value and it does a single thing at the moment it just updates that text content and when the page loads up we update the heading and we pass in a username which can come from local storage we have a key here called a username if that isn't provided or doesn't exist in the store then it defaults to anonymous okay so very straightforward and that is why we're getting anonymous here because of course inside the application tab in local storage there is nothing there is no key value pairs fantastic so how do we get this to work how do I uh, sync between both pages well firstly we need to write some code to set um, you know this username key so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the update heading and I'm going to add a new line to say local storage dot set item. We're going to be setting the username key with a value of whatever username you pass in. So uh, yeah, essentially in this case here, because nothing is provided, so we have obviously a fallback to anonymous, uh, when the page loads up, it is going to, of course, populate that value. But also, let me just get this back, also going to provide anonymous inside here. The goal is for me to then say update heading, pass in, for example, uh, decode, okay, press enter. And of course, yeah, it's, it's going to change that value in local storage. There we go. And also on the page, you have, of course, the goal is to make this page also uh, have that update. So, how do we do that? Well, it is done through the uh, the add event listener function. Okay, so it's a simple event in JavaScript, and it looks something like this: window dot add event listener. Then I'm going to say storage, just like this, because it is going to be this storage event. Now this event fires off when there's a change to uh, a local storage key. Okay, this includes adding a key. All right, now I'm going to accept the event object, the storage event, okay, just like this. Now I'm going to console.log ev, the event object, right? I'll save this. Also keep in mind that both of these tabs are running the exact same code, all right? Now I'm going to make a change to local storage. I'm going to say update heading. Let's update the title or the heading to be Jeff the username should I say, press enter and we get Jeff there, okay, there is no event in this console, keep that in mind, right, there is no console log, okay, inside the application tab, the local storage has been updated, inside the second tab, there is a storage event, okay, let's inspect this event object, remember guys, always Always inspect your event objects if it's your first time using it because there's a lot here for you to discover. 
So we can see here we have a couple of things specific to the uh, storage event. We have a key property telling you which key has changed. In this case, of course, it's the username. New value is Jeff and the old value was decode. So yeah, you can see um, what has been changed. Okay, if it's a new value, then um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna have this as undefined, I believe. Uh, it's not gonna be there. Um, so of course it's an update, so we get a new and old value. And we also have a storage area property. So down here you can access, or it tells you um, which uh, local storage store has changed. So um, I don't believe you can actually see, you know, if it was local storage or session storage, but you actually get the entire storage uh, instance itself if you need to access it. Okay, so you have your, you have your properties like get item, remove item, etc. Um, all that stuff's there for you to use if you need that. But most, most of the time you'll need the new value, the key especially, and the old value. Now, what happens if I remove an item from local storage? Let's try that. Console, local storage dot remove item. Let's remove the username. Okay, there we go. Press enter. In here we get a storage event again, so a second storage event. Expand this, you get old value Jeff, and this time the new value is null. Okay. Fantastic. One more check here. If we do update heading and set it to decode, of course, in this case here, it's going to be setting a new key because I just removed it. So if we try and set the username again, back inside here, this event, yeah, it says null for the old value. Amazing. So we have this interface, this way for us to react to the storage events. How would the rest of this code look? Well, it's going to be up to you in your own situation, but let's finish off what I've got here. So going back inside VS Code, um, you know, let's just go ahead and check the key. We're going to say if events.key is equal to uh, username, okay, then we're going to do something. We're going to say update heading and provide ev.new value. If the username, what about here? If the username has been updated, refresh the heading, okay? Fantastic, so we update the heading, we call the same function again, and it's going to, of course, provide that new text content. Save this, go back in the browser here, and we have the new value because I refreshed the code, so it's gonna load the page and, of course, show the recent value. But in terms of an actual change here, if I say update heading to Jeff, press enter, it appears here and it also appears here. There we go. So it's working, right? Now, one last thing to mention here is you are not going to get an event fired off if the value itself didn't change. So if, for example... Uh, I might just console log to demonstrate this. I'll console log the event object again, save this back in the browser. I'm going to update heading to Jeff again. Jeff is the current value. Okay, so we don't get a storage event here. Now, if I update with Jeff and a space to change it, this time it's actually different. It's just got a space at the end of it. Press enter again. Now you get the event. Okay, so it only fires off when the value actually changes. Even if you call set item, if it doesn't change, it doesn't fire off. And again, guys, remember that the event is not gonna fire off on the same page that fired the event, and that is gonna prevent uh, any sort of reoccurring loop that wouldn't already be prevented because the value doesn't change, but I guess it's got a bit of extra security there. So that's why I'm able to set the item right after I get it because there's no sort of risk there um, for any recursion, like I said, because it doesn't fire off on the same page. So that is how to use the storage event and sync your local or session storage across uh, multiple tabs. Um, if this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.